So you're pretty sure you can move that log? Absolutely. That log ain't nothing. I can put it wherever you want. How long exactly have you been uh, doing this? Since uh, like noon today. Just picked this baby up. My buddy Randy's in jail. He said I could borrow it. So I started scooters, busting truck and tree removal. Do you even have a license? Yeah. This is just a piece of paper that says I can do whatever I want. Listen, do you want me to move the log or not? Yes, please move the log. All right then. What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And today I have a very heavy ballistic shield. So over the years, I have tested out several ballistic shields. And one that's been requested several times, but I have not tested out yet, is the Vaunt Russian Ballistic Shield. This thing is an absolute behemoth. It probably weighs close to 70 pounds, has ballistic glass, and is rated to stop quite a bit. And today we're gonna to find out just how much it can stop, but we're not gonna hit it with your average calibers. We're gonna hit it with the world's most powerful rifles. So as you can see, this thing is what they would call a beefy boy. Um, it is very thick and very heavy. Back here on the back, you have this giant metal handle wrapped in leather. This is a surplus shield. So as you can see, it has been used. Moving to the front of the shield here, you see we have this flap. That's to protect your legs from, I'm guessing, shrapnel or smaller calibers. And then here in the center is a red piece of cloth. And I'm not really sure, but my best guess is to subconsciously draw fire to the center of the shield. And as for this little hook right here, I'm not really sure what that's for, but my best guess would be it's a mellow yellow holder. So I believe this thing is rated for some big stuff. I'm not gonna waste too much time hitting it with smaller calibers. We'll hit it with just a few, and then we're gonna jump right to the big stuff. Have you ever found yourself with too many things and nothing to put it in? Well, thankfully, you threw it too soon. Have you ever found... Have you ever been in a situation where you have one too many things and nothing to put them in? Well, thankfully, thankfully, 511 makes some really awesome backpacks and they're today's sponsor. 511 is the original creator of the tactical backpack. Not only do the 511 Rush backpacks come in every shape, size, and color you can possibly think of, they're also full of handy dandy compartments. And on top of that, they're stupid tough. Not bad. Thanks for skiing. So pretty much the 511 Rush Series backpacks are pretty tough. But you know what else is pretty tough? Paying full price. But lucky for you, if you use code SCOTT20, you will get 20% off all non-sale items. You can use this online by clicking my link in the description down below, or you can walk into one of 511's many retail stores. This offer is good until August 30th. Again, a big thank you to 511 for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. Like I said, we're not gonna spend too much time on the smaller calibers. I'm only gonna use one or two handguns. This is a Glock Model 40 chambered in 10 millimeter, and I'm loaded up with Underwood ammo, 180 grain full metal jackets. I'm gonna hit it in the shield once and that little flap once and see how it holds up. Okay, let's go right for the center. Go for that little flap. 
Let's go check it out. Okay. Looks like we have a good hit right there next to our red square. And if I had to guess, oh, yeah, absolutely nothing. Now let's take a look down here at our little leg protecting flap. Looks like we stopped it. So that's kind of surprising. I figured that was just for shrapnel, but looks like it will stop a small caliber handgun. But will it stop a large handgun? We're gonna go ahead and skip straight to the top and use a Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. This one has an eight and three eighths inch barrel and I'll be using some Underwood ammo, Kentucky Ballistics, 600 grain hard casts. Okay, shield first. <laughs> Try out the little leg flap. Oh! I doubt it stopped that. So we got us a good hit right there. And it stopped it. Stopped the 500 Magnum. There's not even a bulge. Now let's have a look down here. Uh, we hit right there with the 500 Magnum. And, okay, um, it looks like it stopped it. It stopped the 500 Magnum. So before we step it up to the most powerful rifles in the world, we're going to use one or two standard rifles. Well, sort of. This is an AR-15. This one has a 40-inch barrel. Uh, so going to be putting a little extra stank on it. And I'm going to be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 55 grain, 223 controlled chaos. Okay. Go for the shield first. <laughs> now let's see if I can hit that leg flat. Go check that out. So we hit right there. I'm probably gonna need to get a permanent marker so I can mark all these so we don't get lost later down the line. Ugh. But it looks like it stopped it, no problem. Now how about the leg flap? I hit right there. There is no way. Are you kidding me? Right there's where we hit. I am not seeing an exit hole. This leg flappy thing is pretty tough. If you're gonna shoot a Russian ballistic shield, you have to use at least one Russian round. This is my AK-47. This is a Vepr, and I'm gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, controlled chaos, 762 by 39. I believe those are 123 grain. All right, here we go. Ooh. Oh no. You just got jammed. <laughs> oh, I think that may have went through the little leg flappy thing. All right, we hit right there with the AK-47 and there is nothing on the back. Let's check out this little leg flap though. I believe it's done. We hit right there. Yep, finally made it through this thing. So stop the 223, a 500 Magnum, a 10 mil, but the AK-47 was just a little too much for it. Okay, now it's time to move on to the good stuff. These next rifles are all some of the most powerful rifles in the entire world. So you know what that means. 
my shoulder is about to be hurting. So since I'm gonna be offering up my shoulder as sacrifice for your entertainment while you're sitting on the toilet watching this video, could you please do me a favor and at least take a moment and hit that subscribe button. This first rifle is a CZ 550 chambered in 375 h and H Magnum. This is the round here. It is a rather large round, but one of the smaller when it comes to safari rifles. This is a 350 grain barn solid. I am really curious to see what happens when we smack that shield with it. Get her loaded up. Woo, all right. It's about to get real. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what that looked like. I almost caught it. <laughs> All right, before we check it out, I'm gonna go ahead and write 375 H&H. &H. As you can see, we have a good hit right here. And now let's see if there's even a bulge. Ugh. No bulge. Man, that thing is pretty tough. Wait a second, what's this? Oh, that's a dead spider. <laughs> so up next, I have a rifle that I have not used on the channel before. I have used the Caliber before, but this is a brand new CZ 550 416 Rigby with a black synthetic stock. This thing is beautiful. The 416 Rigby might as well be called the 416 Honey Badger because it does not care. It goes through just about everything. This is a 400 grain brass solid. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take a wild guess here. And judging from the poof of cinder block I saw behind the shield, I'm gonna say that the 416 Rigby did not care about that shield. I'm not trying to brag here, but I don't think you could have any more of a perfect shot. It is still smoking. Okay, we're gonna write 416. And you know what? Honey Badger. I'm gonna rename this round because that's what it should be called. I love four bore, I love 577 T-Rex, I love all those rounds, but there's just something about the 416 because it's just so mean. Check this out, we blew through this shield. Oh my gosh. All right, we hit right there. Oh, I would not want to be holding that. Look at the center block. It blew through right here and then blew through the back. And legend says that it is still going. The 416 Rigby is an absolute monster. And I am really curious now to see what the other rounds do to this shield because, well, we already know what it won't stop. Well, 416 Rigby did the trick, but now we're gonna step it up to a bigger diameter rifle and see how it does. This is a 500 Nitro Express, a double barrel, and this one is absolutely gorgeous. It has all these beautiful engravings on it. Here you have a Venusaur. On this side, you have a Blastoid. On the bottom is a Chartizard. And on the very top, on the lever, you have a Pikachu. And the round I'll be using is a 500 Nitro Express. That is a 570 grain brass solid. Okie dokie. See if I can find me a fresh spot. Oh! This rifle is a little light. Kicks kind of hard. You are 500 nitro. And let's have a look here. Okay, I do not think oh, that it made it through. 
Let's have a look. No, it didn't make it through, but this does feel a little bulgy. So after further inspection of the slow-mo, it appears something shot out the side of that shield, but I do not believe it was the bullet. This next gun I have is one that I have not used on the channel ever. This is another CZ550, but this one is chambered in 505 Gibbs. This thing is a big old chunky boy. That is a 600 grain round, and I believe this is probably gonna thump me pretty good. I don't know how much that muzzle brake is gonna help. Woo! This is a very light gun, and this is a big old round, so uh, I'm gonna get kicked pretty hard. Here we go. You get lined up. Oh, wow! So, I hit right here. I'm running out of space. Let's see if it went through. It did not. It does seem to have a little bit of a, a curve to it now after these rounds have hit it because it's definitely taking a lot of force, but it did stop the rounds. Ooh, I'm gonna need to go to the chiropractor after this video. I can go ahead and tell you that. My shoulder is feeling it. And if it wasn't already, it's going to now. This is my A square. 577 T-Rex. This is one of only 24 rifles in the entire world and one of the hardest recoiling rifles you can possibly shoot. This thing shoots a 750 grain brass solid. This monster right here is going to be kicking and I think it's probably gonna blow through that shield. That's my educated guess. Ah, all right. Here we go. Ugh. Find a fresh spot. Oh, golly! Let's go check that out. Okie dokie. Well, Upon inspection, I can already tell you that it did not go through the shield, but this shield is definitely starting to feel all of this because it is ripping apart. Oh, hey, yeah. Uh. So it looks like we hit right there, right where I was aiming. Yeah, um, it is very bulgy back here but it did not penetrate through the shield. Well, now it's time for the moment that you've all been waiting for. We're gonna hit this shield with the four bore rifle, the biggest shoulder fired rifle I can possibly get my hands on. This is a Christian Firearms four bore falling block single shot rifle. It is one inch in diameter, weighs over 20 pounds and produces upwards of 200 pounds of felt recoil. This is the giant round that it fires. Like I said, that's one inch in diameter, and that is a 2,150 grain bullet. <laughs> oh, shoulder fired artillery. This is about to kick really hard. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh <laughs> I don't think it went through it but if you were holding that shield I'm pretty sure your arm is gonna be broken Woo! talk about some energy transfer that cinder block is no more uh, like I said oh, this shield oh, oh my gosh it hit it so hard it knocked the ballistic glass off 
I hit right there, right above the 416 rig, but you can see the giant hole. And there is no hole here, but if you look right there, there's a little round mark. And I believe that is where all that energy came through and completely destroyed that cinder block. And I cannot believe that it knocked that off. So pretty much, if you had your arm on there and you got hit with a four bore, your arm is gonna be no more. So when it comes to defeating armor, speed is key. Most of the rounds we use today are not moving fast enough to make it through that shield, but they are delivering a tremendous amount of energy. The four bore is over 10,000 foot pounds. It did not penetrate the shield, but if you were holding on to it, you definitely would have had some energy transfer. But when it comes to penetration, today the 416 Rigby is the champ. This thing has a big round, 400 grains, but it's moving super fast and was the perfect combination to defeat that shield. So since it's the champ, it gets the opportunity to shoot that glass. Let's see if we can make it through that peephole. Okay, let's see if I can actually do this. Um, I think I hit a little high. I 100% would not want to be holding this shield if 416 Rigby was heading my way. It'll go through the shield and it will definitely go through a peephole. Oh, this is bad. So as you can see, we blew right through that. Let me see if I can just kind of break this off. You don't want to breathe that in. Let's see if I can pick this up without cutting my fingers. Yeah, made it completely through that, no problem. I still got one more test. I am so excited about this. today's video i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below along with what else you'd like to see me blast with the four more if you did enjoy today's video do me a big favor and give it a like and if you're not subscribed to kentucky ballistics do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button also be sure to check me out on kentucky customs kentucky ballistics shorts patreon facebook instagram and twitter links to all those can be found in the description down below along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com just in case you want to pick up a shirt. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.